I got a whole lot of word in me and um, the sermon, but just if I'm going to open up the scripture, you, you know, you can tell. I, you know, I don't, I don't hurt for, you know, I don't have to find, um, go buy sermon books and things like that. I'm ready to preach the word. Instant in season and out of season. It's like they say, I'm ready to preach the word at the drop of a hat and I'll drop the hat. Amen? I love the word of God. And I've enjoyed being able to, to feed on it and have time in it um, amongst all the other stuff that I'm doing. But, but, um, but, uh, we've got to get at least you know a part of what we we uh, put together here for you today on I love my church. We're teaching a series, and this is part three, our third message on I love my church. We started two weeks ago talking about them dry bones and Ezekiel Ezekiel speaking to them dry bones and telling them to come alive. A principle of the confession of the word of of saying what God says and seeing a supernatural response. And God wants us as a church to come alive, just like those skeletons came together and came alive. Ezekiel said to them, dry bones, and I'm not going to do it. Okay, last week we talked about the value of the church, that God values His church. How much does Jesus love the church? Yeah, yeah, you know. He loves the church this much. He loves the church so much that He gave His life. God the Father loves the church so much that He gave His only Son to die for it. And so we see that God values the church. What I want to do today is, is um, talk to you about the vision of the church, the structure of the church. And, um, and we're going to start with Proverbs 29, verse 18. I'm going to try to move through these uh, quickly. Um, where there is no vision the people perish. But he that keepeth the law, happy is he. Um, this is the King James Version. Uh, the New King James says it where there is no revelation. But where there is no vision, the people perish. But he that keepeth the law, happy is he. What I'm going to do for our opening text is read to you from three other translations to get the bigger picture of what God's saying here. In the Amplified Classic Translation... It says, where there is no vision, no redemptive revelation of God, the people perish. But he who keeps the law of God, include, which includes that of man, blessed, happy, fortunate, and enviable is he. So the law of God, doing what God says, we do the law of man. Hence, social distancing, using the antiseptic wives and everything else. Um, we want to cooperate. We want to try to do things as long as it doesn't defy God's higher law. Amen? And so, um, again, we see no vision. Redemptive revelation of God. Proverbs 29, 18 in the New Living says it like this, when people do not accept divine guidance, they run wild. So when people aren't hearing from God, listening to God, they run wild. But whoever obeys the law is joyful. You know, we know as Christians, we sing the joy of the Lord is our strength and, and uh, so many joy songs, right? Even in Christmas time, joy to the world. Christianity is about joy, having the joy of the Lord, living in joy, be joyful. We're joyful, we're triumphant, all of that. But what's the context? The joy of the Lord is in having the revelation of God, the wisdom of it. And that's where we will experience joy. Go back to our offering teaching that we did this morning. If you're in the will of God, in the pleasure of God, under the, under the protection, in, within the provision, within the hedge of protection, within the anointing, within the will of God. I know I've said a couple of those things a couple times, but when you're there, it's a place of joy. You're in God's presence. You're in God's provision. You're in God's protection. But if you don't do that and you're out here, what's going on? Who's, who's working in your life instead of God? The devil, the devourer. That's not joy. Having, having what you work for is uh, devoured is not joy. Graham, if somebody just, you got your paycheck handed to you, and somebody just pulled that out of your hand and ripped it to shreds, 
would you feel joy after you put in 40 hours? It's not joyful. <laughs> we get it, right? So, so is this helping you get this understanding? So God gives us guidance, and if we're going to have the joy of the Lord, the blessing of God, it's when we obey that guidance, when we do what he's instructed us to do. And then in the message, this is a paraphrase, not a translation, but just another way of being able to see it. It says, if people can't see what God is doing, they stumble all over themselves. But when they attend to what he reveals, they are most blessed. Isn't that awesome? I think that's awesome. Simple truth that God wants you to have a blessed life. We've said John 10.10 around here so much, not part of the sermon notes, but the thief comes but for to steal, to kill, and destroy. But I have come that you might have life, and that more abundantly. Well, there's your contrast. Who's the one who's stealing, killing, and destroying? The devil. Who's the one who brings abundant life, life to the full until it overflows? God, Jesus. It's simple. I set before you life and death, blessing and cursing. He's not the one cursing you, the devourer's cursing you. But if you're not in his will, where are you? See how it's all coming together? So what is the vision for the church that God values so much? That he wants to be alive. He wants to come alive. Just like those, those skeletons came alive with the Spirit of God moving and flesh came, sinews came, blood vessels came, all the cells came together, and then life came when he spoke that word. He's saying that to us today. Well, what is the vision of God? Number one, He wants this church, He wants His church to be a Word church where the Word of God is taught. We are a Word church. Hebrews chapter 4, verse 12, For the Word of God is living and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the division of soul and spirit and joints and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and the intents of the heart. The Word of God is is powerful and has an ability to help you to discern the thoughts and the intents of your heart to really know the will of God. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 15 in the New Living says this, Work hard so you can present yourself to God uh, and receive His approval. Be a good worker, in this case a good minister, preacher, one who does not be, need to be ashamed and who correctly explains the word of truth. What's the job of the pastor? To study, to uh, work hard at knowing God's word, knowing God's will, seeking that, and then uh, working hard at being able to present that to his people to um, and correctly explain it. And so... Years ago, I used to preach when I was really young in the ministry more than I taught. And I, and I love to preach. But I don't want to just stir you up and fire you up. A friend of ours in Illinois, Pastor Terry McKenzie, used to sing a song in our church. He was the worship leader at the time called I'm Tired of Being Stirred and Not Being Changed. I think it was an old Lor Larnell Harris song. And man, I used to love it when he would sing that. And it was so powerful, that truth in that. I don't want to just be stirred. I want to be changed. And what changes us? The Word of God, which is the will of God. And what makes it change us? When, it, when it's revelation to us. When we begin to understand it. So we're a Word church and pray for your pastor to be able to effectively be able to teach you and to, or correctly explain to you the Word of truth. The will of God. Number two, we're a family church. We're a church that is made up, uh, that makes up a family, a local family. We're part of the family of God, but we're, we're a local family. And it's made up of, of nuclear families where you have a father, a mother, and children, but it's also single parent households. It's also uh, single households that aren't married, don't have children. It's made up of children and youth. Some we have, you know, some teenagers 
that attend here, their their family doesn't, their parents don't, and so on. And so, um, it's it's made up of senior citizens, singles, all of that, and all of us make up this local family. Like Pastor Lisa said, you're our family, and it's so good to see you. You know, I I can't wait to see our earthly family. Been a while, and it's going to be good to see them again. But you know, we feel exactly the same way when we came in here last Sunday and got to see you or when we went visiting at different times throughout the, the weeks and the youth went, I went, um, dropping CDs off. Sometimes I'd get to see you, Brenda peek out the door, you know, and things like that. I got to talk to Linda out on the porch. They got to talk to you, you know, the yard, uh, uh, what Rod Rice in Wilmer, Minnesota calls the porch pastor, the porch visit, you know, six feet away. And, um, and it's just good to see each other. But in Mark chapter 3, verse 33, this is where we get that we're a family. But Jesus answered them, he being Jesus, capital H, answered them saying, who is my mother or brothers? Just to let you know, um, they said, hey, your mother and brothers are out waiting and they want to they see you. And he answers, who is my mother or my brothers? And he looked around the circle at those who sat about him and he said, here are my mother and my brothers. He wasn't saying that's not my family. But he was giving them a revelation, a blessing, a truth. We know that he's not re he didn't reject his family at this point. He makes provision for Mary's substance from the cross. In his agony, in, in his sayings from the cross, one of those things is, woman, behold your son, son, behold your mother. So what he's saying is, you know, who, who is my family? My family isn't just this natural family that, that have the same bloodline as me, but you are my family. Isn't that beautiful? We are the family of God. Can you say that? I am the family of God. I'm part of God's family. I'm in His forever family. I'm part of this local family. Amen. For we all make up one special family. Then number three, we're a worshiping church. You know, very important throughout the Scripture, we see the importance of worship. And that's been one of the negatives. She's had some of the funny positives about this. One of the negatives is not being able to worship together. I know you've been able to worship. You can listen to Caleb. You can listen to Spirit FM. You can listen to streaming, you know, um, Bethel or Hill songs or just whatever it is that you like to do. But we haven't been able to um, stream that because of the copyright issues and so on. And, and even today, those that aren't here, we're asking, why isn't the stream going? Well, we, we can't start the stream till after the, the songs are over. We've missed that because worship is so important. And worship, really, in a way, it's like the plow you know, plowing up the ground, you know, turning up that soil, uh, that, fr that, that, that nutritious, not nutritious, uh, but uh, mineral-rich, you know, nutrient-filled soil, getting it turned up and loosened up, softened, breaking up the fallow ground so that the seed could be sowed. And worship does that. In... Um, uh, in, in the fact that we're a worship, we want to be a church, uh, a worshiping church where God is worshipped in spirit and in truth with the liberty that we have in Jesus Christ. Scripture reference, John 4, 23 and 24. But the hour is coming and now is when true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and in truth for the Father is seeking such to worship Him. God is spirit and those who worship Him must worship in spirit and and truth. And you know, the context of this is Jesus is talking to a Samaritan woman who says, our father said to worship on this mountain. Your father said to worship in Jerusalem. You know, where do we worship? He says the hours come. And it now is where true worshipers are going to worship wherever they are, just in spirit and truth. You don't have to be on this mountain. You don't have to be in that temple in Jerusalem. Wherever you are, you can worship me. You can worship my father. In spirit and truth. Isn't that amazing? So, um, so we make worship important to us here. 
And you know, I thought about it over the years. We went from a karaoke machine when this church started as a plant out of a church in Arkansas with Pastor uh, uh, um, Dale Lunday. We came up here for a two-year project to get this started. And then we came in to pastor it and incorporate it and turn it to its own church, not an outreach of that church. And we took over that church 20 years ago in June. We're going to celebrate next month our 20th year as pastors and as a as a, as a actual our own church. But that karaoke machine, I guess you had that almost the whole two years or part of the two years, you know. And they gave that to us when we came to pastor, um, and that's how you all worshipped back then. And they were at the civic center when we came, and uh, so so we had that karaoke machine. And really soon after that, we got a sound system. It was a portable sound system. And we got overhead projector and we had the slides. Some of you remember that. <laughs> then we went to a quality sound system back there instead of the portable because we were hauling the portable commuting from Branson, putting in the back of our tr in our trunk. We had the speakers, the powered amplifier, mixer, and p speaker stands and all that set up and tore it down every, every Sunday. And so we went from that to a powered mixer, you know, but... Uh, a permanent one, more channels and all that. And then we we um, added the digital, the computer, and we had a, a projecting screen, an old Dell projector on there. And then we went to digital projections to do that from the transparencies. And then we went to the digital screens. And now we're producing a high-definition digital stream to the world, reaching more people than we ever have. And so... Um, so it's important for us to move to the place where we can do worship, not just in-house, but for those who, like today, couldn't come. We had a couple let me know they're not going to be able to make it today, and they missed out on the worship portion. So it is a goal for us to get there because worship is important, and we're a worshiping church. I've got to wrap it up. We're a growing church. Is it 10 after? My watch says 10 after on the dot. And I told you we'd do 60 minutes to, to hour and 10 minute services so that you wouldn't, you know, struggle and you could go to the bathroom when you get home. So how about we just disconnect? Um, had a few more points uh, to be able to make. I'm always, I always have more than I, than I preach, but I had a few more. Growing church, a caring church, a praying church, um, supernatural church. And uh, and then we'll talk about some areas of ministry next week. I was hoping to get through the the vision portion and then the practical next week, but it's okay. We got time. We are a church that God raised up. Twenty two years ago, um, it's it was birthed as as West Plains Family Church. Um, we came in twenty years ago. And uh, and it became renamed Journey Church back when we had two different locations and needed to be able to do that. But I love that. I always had in my heart and would love to have a, a different name, you know, that was communicated our vision a little. But you know how it started? Linda and her aunt. How many of you remember Willa? I think you still call her Aunt Wilma, right? But, but she was Willa to us. They prayed, and they had a couple others, I think, on and off, but they prayed this church into existence. And I've called them the mothers of the church since then in the sense that they birthed that in their spirits. And God raised us up, not just to bless and feed them, but to have an impact on this community the heart of the Ozarks, when I say community, it's not just West Plains, but the whole area that where we can effectively contact, but also the world. And because of where we've come, and even with this going on, it accelerated things, that there are people who are right now in different states that are watching this message, and we're so glad you're with us. But there are people in different states, and perhaps in different countries, that are hearing the Word of God that are able to worship with us, and what a blessing that is. And so, so we're here for a reason. 
and and God is going to bless us. He's got good plans for us, and I've got to stop. Um, but thank you for coming in this morning. I will not go a few minutes over like I just did today. Um, but I'm going to blame it on Pastor Lisa because I looked at my watch and it was 10.30 and I was supposed to get the service at 10.20. So it's really her fault. No, I'm just, I'm, I'm just teasing. And I did an offering teaching, so that, that triggered. Um, but we'll, we'll, we'll flow. Um, but let's close in prayer for those of you that are here, those of you that are watching. Just bow your head right where you are and let's pray. Father, we thank you that you have, have created the church, that it is your family that we are part of that forever family. And that here locally, this local body is a local part of the family of God, so we're a local family. And we thank You for the revelation of that. That You don't consider us an institution or an organization or a business. You call us family. Thank You for loving us as a father loves their children. As a husband loves the wife, as a child loves their parents, as a family loves their family members. It's family, Lord, and we're blessed by that revelation. And we thank you for what you've you've called the local church to be. Thank you for putting your anointing on the word, the portion of the word we shared today, the portion of the vision today. And thank you that um, you will bless what we continue to look at from your word in the weeks ahead. Bless this year, people, I pray anoint them, provide for them, let them sense your presence wherever they are. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. God bless you. Thank you all for tuning in this morning. Thank you all for coming. We love you. We appreciate you.